Hey folks, my name's Kevin and it's time for a little bit more knife nerdery. You can tell you've been buying too many knives when you genuinely forgot that you bought something and it's been sitting in the corner of your room waiting to be unboxed for literally three full weeks. And that's what's going on here. Inside this box, we have the newer flipper tab liner lock version of this Monterey Bay Knives Slayback. I've been absolutely loving this knife. This is such a good EDC knife. It's so good at piercing into little spaces and kind of cutting around stuff. I'm loving it. But sometimes you just want that extra security of a liner lock rather than one of these double detent flippers. I will say that this is like a better double detent flipper than some of the ones I've felt in terms of just how much pressure it takes. But still, as fun as this is, sometimes you just want a locking knife. The they they call the other one a the flipper version, and it's a little bit of a misnomer because this is also a flipper knife. This is a flipper tab right there. In fact, it's a pretty darn effective flipper tab. But the version inside this box is much more like what you'll find on here: a more standard flipper tab shape and location, and a liner lock. This is the Monterey Bay Knives Easy C 1.5, and. Uh, I think what's gonna be in this box is basically a cross between these two knives. Let's get this open finally. Oh, I wanted to say one more thing. I didn't buy this originally because I was planning on buying it at the same time as this. I ended up picking this up from a friend instead and I kinda of just forgot to purchase this and it sold out. I managed to pick up one because they loaded like maybe three more in stock, something like that, um, as they were um, loading in a different knife. I think the, I don't know, maybe the pincher that came out recently. This is sold out at the moment, but I am 100% confident this will come back because this has been a very successful knife for them And it just won best factory EDC at Blade Show West a couple weeks ago Like they know this is a quality knife What might be different though in a future release is what steel it's in and that's one of the things that's gonna be really interesting about this This version is done in M390 steel like a lot of theirs have been done in and what's in here is something totally different Let's finally open this up Oh, where is this going? Oh, I see. This is one of those ones where you have to kind of get in. Yeah. There we are. I love that they all come in these pouches. Okay, what's inside? We have... Oh, that is awesome. Oh, I didn't know that they did that on these. So this is an entire extra hardware kit, including the freaking pivot. That's crazy. Do they do they always do this? That is so cool. Okay. And one of those cleaning cloths that I've got a million of, and I always put them just right back in the pouch. Here we are. Okay, time for the flip. That worked really, really well. Ooh, it's like oily. I have a feeling I know why it's oily. We'll get to that when we talk about the steel. Okay, but that was, ooh, that's smooth. What I'm really interested in is how does this compare to this? Because this is one of the snappiest knives I've felt in a really long time. Ooh. Really good, but not as snappy. This is super freaking crisp. And this, how did that work? I'd say this is pretty darn snappy, but not quite. It's not quite as crisp. But boy, is it still really, really good. And man, this action on the clothes, that is so smooth. Takes very little effort. I'm noticing a squeaking noise. Hear that? I imagine there's oil on the back of this I'll have to clean off. So this is indeed a cross between these two knives. Let's see if I can get these up. Yeah. So what is going on here? Yeah, look at that line. So I think the reason why this was oiled is because this steel down here is something special. 
This bottom layer here that you see, this line across the bottom, and it's not as a bottom layer per se, it's, it's the core of this. This is ZDP 189. And this is a Sanmai construction, which means that there is a core of ZDP 189. You can see that there's that yeah, right there. That's the ZDP 189. And it's been, it's been jacketed is the phrase they tend to use in this with a different steel. In this case, 420J. Now they call it 420J, but I don't think there really is 420J. I'm pretty sure there's only 420J B or a two or something like that. Point is, these are two different steels and they have very different properties. 420J is not a particularly great steel when it comes to just about anything but um, but corrosion resistance. It's pretty darn good at corrosion resistance, but it's not like a great steel for edge retention. So what they do in a knife like this, they put something that is really great at edge retention as the core, and then they put something that is good at um, both corrosion resistance and also kind of toughness out on the sides. And so having the, the tougher, more corrosion resistant steel on the outside both protects the inside from uh, corrosion, but also gives it some more of that strength and flexibility so that the inside is, so it's not just an entire knife of brittle steel. But so the ZDP 189 is kind of insane. This stuff has been um, HRC tested, I think they said, yeah, 66 to 67. And so that's insanely high HRC. So in theory, this should be a very, very good slicer for a very, very good long period of time. Now, I've not had any problems whatsoever with this one becoming dull. In fact, I've not even, I don't think I've even had to strop this. I've had this one in MP390 and I've been using it a lot on boxes and cutting through plastic. And plastic can kind of wear down a knife pretty quick. And I have not had any problems with this edge retention. So uh, if this lasts even longer, that will be pretty darn cool. Ooh. Do they feel any different in hand in terms of weight? No, and the profile's all exactly the same. So one thing I am curious about is how this feels in terms of, of how you hold it. Because I've been used to holding this one kind of like this. You you can't put a ton of force up here, but you can put force right here, especially if you are if you're like cutting on a cross on a surface. And so I'm used to kind of holding it all the way up there. Hmm. I will say that um, because I have this knife and I'm used to feeling the shape in my hand, I, I, I do find myself feeling a little bit crowded against this, but I don't think that that would happen under normal circumstances. For example, this knife has nearly the exact same proportions back here, and I've never had that feeling on this one. I'm just used to holding this slightly further back because it just didn't ever occur to me to try and hold it further up. And this one, yeah, feels exactly the same as that. I'm just used to putting my hand a little bit higher up, and so I keep trying to hold it there. Okay, well this will be really fun. Um, I will talk about this one at some point, but mostly I'm probably going to focus on this one in my upcoming comments on this, because this is the one that's doing something a little bit more novel. The, the implementation here is what they call an inset liner lock, and that just means that the liner lock is... Um, nested into the scales in a way that makes it so that this part protrudes and it's done that on, on both of these and that's that's i mean you'll find that on a fair number of knives and so it's not particularly novel in terms of um anything other than the steel part so i'm not sure how much i'll talk about this in a future video probably focus on this but i will talk about how that um flipper tab affects my ergonomic uh, use of this knife. I'm very excited to have this. Um, I cannot wait to... Yeah, that does flip really good. I cannot wait to get this squeak out. <laughs> yeah, but can't wait to play with this some more. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoy this. Catch you next time and have a nice rest of your day. You know what? I take that back. I take back what I said earlier. Playing with these a little bit more, I'd say these are pretty darn equally snappy. I think I just... Yeah, I think what's going on between the two, um, this one, the way it's built, has these 
uh, steel liners with the holes in them. And the uh, micarta makes this entire thing kind of echo in this way. So when you snap it open, you, you hear it more. And it just, it, it really kind of emphasizes how frickin' snappy this is. And this one is solid slabs of titanium. And that, on the one hand, that gives you that kind of um, feeling in your hand of that reverberation continuing through, but it just doesn't echo the same way. And so I think that's what's going on in terms of my perception of the two. Because when I actually think carefully about how how snappy this is, they're basically the same. Which is to say, these are both incredibly snappy knives. <laughs> Can I even fail this? It's genuinely hard to fail this. I don't, I don't know if I'll be able to. Because that is, yeah, wow, okay. I, don't, I honestly don't know if I can fail this. I have been able to fail this one, yeah. But I think the reason why I'm failing it is not really that I'm failing it, but you'll notice that this can stop right there. Yeah, that's what's really going on. If you do this kind of thing, where you just kind of push down, the the tang of the blade hits into your finger because it's in the way. And so I don't know if I can fail this in like a, a way that doesn't mean I'm just blocking it. Because the moment you you break this, yeah, it just comes out. Man, these are dang good. Okay, actual buy. See you next time.